Hey, welcome back. This is volume 2 already. Today, we're diving deeper into the pen tool in Affinity Designer. Perfect for beginners, so no worries if you're new to this. And if you're not using a drawing tablet, that's totally fine. Drawing with a mouse might be a bit slower, but it still works great. Alright, let's dive right in. Here's the deal with the pen tool. You click once, then click again to draw straight lines, or click and drag if you want to make curves. When you're done, just double-click the last point or hit escape. While you're drawing, clicking the last point again switches the pen tool to smart mode. But if you want to keep going, select the last point, then continue drawing. Now, here's a neat trick. You can hold control to adjust your lines or move node points around. For those who don't want to keep switching between the pen tool and the node tool. The pen tool works hand in hand with the node tool. Like holding alt makes your lines straight. Shift plus alt turns points into smooth curves. And control can delete the line between two nodes. That's basically the core of it. Okay, let's start drawing a face. Grab the circle tool, convert it to curves, then hold Alt while clicking to turn the curves into straight lines. Use the node tool, click on the line, and drag it to curve it nicely, or hold Ctrl while dragging for smoother control. Use the pen tool to draw the eyebrows, eyes, and mouth. Click and click and drag to create curves. Want to duplicate? Just hold Ctrl and drag, or press Ctrl J, then move it to the other side. Up top, the context toolbar changes depending on what tool you're using, so definitely play around with those options, they're super helpful. Quick tip, when you're using the Move tool, double-click an object and it switches to the Node tool automatically. You can also double-click to dive into groups and select objects without ungrouping. Double-click on either side of the circle to create a perfect circle. Try using line mode to draw your lines, it creates straight lines between two points without needing to press the escape key every time you stop drawing. It helps speed up your workflow. To delete unwanted lines, use the shape builder tool to remove overlapping parts. Just keep in mind, it only works on lines that actually intersect. One important thing with vectors is to always start your new lines by snapping the first node to an existing path. Snapping is everything in vector work. Lines and nodes need to actually snap, not just touch. It's important for coloring. I'll explain why later. It's honestly not that hard. There might be a few extra steps to watch out for, but there are also super simple ways to fix them too. If you want pressure-sensitive lines with varying thickness, adjust the pressure curve in the stroke panel. That gives you a nice hand-drawn feel. Drawing line art in vector using the pen tool might seem a bit tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that hard. For simple shapes, cartoon-style drawings with minimal lines, lettering, or logo design, especially when you want those smooth, clean curves, it works really well. Even if you don't have a drawing tablet, you can still use the pencil tool too. Just turn up the stabilizer setting and take your time. With a little bit of extra control, you'll get the result you want. After you finish your sketch, Try scaling it down. You'll notice your strokes get thicker. 
that's because scale with object wasn't turned on in the stroke panel. So before resizing, group everything and make sure that option is checked. Let's talk color. Just because lines look like they touch doesn't mean the shape is closed. If there are gaps, the vector flood fill tool won't work properly. So, either click directly on the stroke to fill color, only when the start and end points are close to each other. Or move the node to snap perfectly to another line. When it snaps, you'll see a yellow guide pop up, that means it's locked in place. This function still needs further improvement, to make it easier to create closed shapes later on. Just let the lines overlap, that way, you won't have to worry about any gaps. You'll just need to spend a little time erasing the extra parts later. While working, we don't worry too much about this, we just focus on finishing the drawing and making sure all the lines touch. So, use Expand Stroke from the Layer menu to turn everything into object shapes, then fill in the color. It's way faster that way. Just keep in mind, your strokes need to be solid basic strokes, no fancy styles. And if you don't plan to change your line styles later, this method's perfect. After that, just keep filling with the Vector Flood Fill tool until everything's colored. Now both the ink lines and colors are vector. Before you hand in your work, don't forget to expand all stroke lines into object shapes. The result? Super clean and scalable without losing quality. People often ask why use vectors at all? Well, vectors are awesome for printing, advertising, packaging, t-shirt designs, and more. But at the end of the day, it's all about great design. Use whatever tools help you make your best work. That's it for today's video. Stick around because I'll keep sharing the key stuff you need to really get comfy with Affinity Designer. I might not go super deep into every tiny detail, but I promise this gives you a solid foundation to work from. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.